Let's look at some other joints as they perform movements that are flexion or extension. So the shoulder, as I leave anatomical position, that shoulder flexion, as I return to anatomical position, that's extension. And now if I go beyond that, that's hyperextension. Elbow, flexion, extension. Some people have the capability to go into a little bit of hyperextension there. I am not one of those people. With the rest of our spine, I want you to think about each little vertebra in there. There's seven cervical, there's 12 thoracic, there's five lumbar, and then you have your sacrum and coccyx, right? At each little segment there, you have a degree of flexion and extension and hyperextension that can occur. So incrementally, I can go into flexion. I can return to anatomical position with extension, and then I can go into hyperextension. Okay, again, all sagittal. Um, if we're looking at our fingers, flexion, extension, flexion, extension, and then a little bit of hyperextension. So if I were to put my hands flat down on a surface, I can still lift my fingers off. That's hyperextension. The thumb, flexion, extension, it actually occurs in the frontal plane. I always tell my students, for flexion, think about making a really angry four. Ugh, should make an angry face. Angry four, and then extension, you're gonna pull that thumb way out to the side. So see, that is not a sagittal plane movement. Sagittal will be coming straight forward, right? But we're going out to the side. I think about it like a windshield wiper, flexion and extension, flexion and extension. For the scope of this class, the thumb is not really something you're gonna focus on very much. So remember, he's the only exception Think about the other joints within the body, okay? Flexion and extension. I'm going to stand on my bench to show you the lower extremity examples of flexion and extension. Okay, so we've got hip, flexion, extension, hyperextension. With my knee, I've got flexion. Remember, I'm leaving anatomical position. And then I've got extension returning. Now let's look at my foot here. I've got plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Plantar flexion, think about planting into the ground, going up on your tippy toes, but planting that ball of your foot down into the ground. And then dorsiflexion, think about toes towards your shin, the dorsal fin of a shark. Okay, your toes can also do flexion and extension. Just think about curling your toes. So that would be flexion. Return to anatomical or neutral. That would be extension. And then if you can lift your toes up off of the ground when you're standing flat-footed, that would be a little bit of hyperextension in those toes. All right? For most of the joints in the body, that's flexion and extension.